Hi, this is Brent from Theoretically Practical, and today we're going to finally start working on my 1991 uh, Land Rover Defender 90. This is the uh, British version, right-hand drive with the 200 TDI. Um, I will say that in my desire to own one, I may have purchased one that was perhaps not quite in the condition one would have wanted. And uh, three months after I bought it, the engine blew up, which was bad, but once I started digging into the underside, it was worse. Um, if you're the person who put Z-Bart coating all over this frame, I will hunt you down. Uh, it did so much damage to the frame. So, looked great at first glance, not once you started poking at it. But that's not really what we're gonna be into today. We're gonna be replacing the piece of aluminum in this bulkhead up there. So basically, I'll get you guys a better view of it. This piece of plate and this replaced outrigger sandwich a piece of aluminum between the two of them. And if you know anything about the uh, activity between uh, steel and aluminum, you know that aluminum loses and it makes a battery. So I'm going to take off this bracket here, cut out this piece of aluminum a little bit bigger, take in a new piece of aluminum, uh, and that's really all I'm trying to do today. I know I could do a thousand videos like that on this. Uh, there's so many little things to do, but you know, hey, the journey of a, a thousand miles starts with a single step. So we're going to be starting here. And uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm sure a number of people that looked at this said, well, geez, you know, it's a little crusty there, it's a little crusty there, how bad could it really be? Well, I removed the bolt, and uh, that went right in the eyes. Uh, yeah, that's how bad it can be. So that's all bad. That's actually pretty solid up there. I'm gonna clean that up anyways. But this white powder is what happens. Basically, uh, because the dissimilar metals are different on the galvanic scale, it creates a tiny battery when water gets, water gets in there, and it causes galvanic corrosion. So this area I'm gonna clean up and paint. This area I'm gonna cut out and weld a new patch in. And uh, we'll take a look at the bracket, which is... How did the bracket, oh wow, All right, and then the bracket itself is, uh, you know, it's not in great shape, but for what it is, it's not that big of a deal, uh, I say that, but this is what mounts the end of the seat belt of the car to the, to the actual, well, not even to the frame, because mounting it to the frame would make sense, and this is a Defender. Uh, this is going to get uh, sandblasted and painted before it goes on, and uh, I'm going to be putting a um, thin layer of UHMW plastic or something that, or maybe nylon between these to prevent the galvanic corrosion. And I'm also, wherever the uh, fasteners go through the aluminum, I have this stuff called Ultra Tef Gel, T-E-F. It's for boats, uh, for preventing galvanic corrosion. Um, it's what the forums recommend, and I don't see a reason not to use it. So we got our nice, beautiful hole there. Um, the reason why I didn't do that before I welded this in is because I did not want to remove my reference points. So I wanted to use this to bolt into the bracket to kind of make sure that it lined up well enough anyhow. So, and I, and I think that that worked out just fine. I'm going to guess that's, uh, it's, it looks thicker than, than, than two millimeters, but I'm going to guess that was intended to be two millimeters, unless it's two and a half millimeters. But it's about 105 thick. And I've got this piece of aluminum plate here, which is within 10 thou of the thickness. So um, we'll be cutting up this piece of plate that I got from the dump. Hopefully it's not some weird variety of aluminum that doesn't weld. But uh, I have it. It's free. We're going to try it. This is never going to be a show car. But it might be a go-car again once more eventually. Six or seven thousand years from now. Yeah, project cars, man. They are awesome and you'll never, ever, ever be disappointed. 
But once the second I drive this for five minutes, all sins will be forgiven as per usual. So uh, I'm going to set you guys up on a tripod and then get cutting on that. One thing I'll be doing is uh, I've got a big block. I don't have the right kind of lubricant. I never have the right kind of anything, do I? But I got this big block of beeswax that's hard as heck in it. I got a yard sale for like $2 and I looked it up and this should help prevent uh, clogging on my abrasives. I also have a, uh, like a, a jigsaw that I can use to cut the aluminum, but I think putting this on the abrasives will let me get in there with a cutoff wheel uh, and hopefully make some traction on it. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, I've got enough tools that I will find a way, I promise you. Okay guys, well, I kind of fast forwarded a bit there, but I got this all cleaned up. I got a piece cut out, it's prepped. I didn't bevel the edges. I feel like for this, I'm gonna weld it on both sides and I feel like that should give me the penetration I need. So if you got different thoughts, let me know in the comments. I, I'm, I'm no professional aluminum welder. Uh, so yeah, I gotta get my torch set up. There's also a couple of these larger pits that I kind of ground out and I'm, I'm gonna give them a shot and I'll try these pits first, because if I don't want to blow, if I blow this out a little bit, it's not going to matter. But if I blow that out, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. So, but first I'm going to start by tacking this in four or five places. We're going to clean it up with acetone and I've got a, a wire brush that I only use for aluminum welding. So that's how we're going to proceed there and see how she goes. Well guys, I said I would uh, bring you back after I got tacked, but uh, apparently I lied. You'll notice, I mean, I'm not gonna claim to be any sort of uh, beautiful TIG welder. These aren't awesome. I had weird issues when I was trying to tack it. Some of the stuff up here is just trash, but I'm gonna try to make an effort, another effort to go after it, uh, get it a little bit better. Um, the tacking went poorly. Uh, it took me a minute to figure out what my settings were. And it really, once I got a bead going, it was it was a lot easier to just follow it all the way to the end. So I still have there, kind of want to touch up there a little bit, and there, and I still haven't tried to fill in one of these holes, but after how well this went, I'm a little bit hesitant. But it just took me a minute to get my, uh, my settings right on my welder. So this is my... Uh, Miller Dial Arc 250 HF. It's from the 80s. Um, you know, I've got my elect post flow time set to whatever the electrode size says. High frequency on continuous, remote amperage, and remote contactor on. I have it on the middle setting at 90%. Um, that seems to be right where I want to be. It's definitely not something I'm great at finding out exactly where my settings need to be for amperage for aluminum. It seems like I'll mess around and mess around and mess around, but once you get it, it is, it is on, and that's a good thing. So anyways, that's my settings. I'm gonna finish welding that, and then we'll show you the finished product. Well, here's the front side. It uh, doesn't look great, but some of that, a lot of that is because it actually got more than 100% penetration. So the crappy welding I did on the back side interfered with the crappy welding I did on the front side. I will say this piece of plate is going nowhere and that really was the deal. So we'll show you the back side too. Because when I started doing this, my thought was, I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. When it works, man, you'll see it. When it doesn't work, I'll still show you my shame. But I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with this. Again, this is gonna be, uh, hopefully at some point, what could be considered a hardcore off-roader. It's not gonna be doing too many road miles, and uh, that's good and sturdy. Now that this section is complete, here i'm gonna go through along and see what i can do for there there and then that whole mess over there which maybe after this side i've decided 
I like the repair that somebody else did that I don't have to touch. I will be undercoating this whole vehicle with New Hampshire oil undercoating. It's not like a, a, a Z-Bart. It's, it's like fluid film, but uh, it's black, which is nice. So I don't have to paint it. Um, and because this thing has like 18 flavors of paint on the frame and it's just, it's dirty, it's, it's crusty, it's never gonna be clean enough to paint. And quite frankly, I hope that it spends enough time in the mud that it's never something I care about. So the New Hampshire undercoating will cut, it'll protect the frame, it'll make it look good and uh, from afar anyways, and it'll be easy to reapply without a whole lot of prep work. So uh, as you can see, I, I rebuilt this a while back. This whole cross member here uh, was basically Swiss cheese. I got a couple more braces to pop back in there, but it's pretty well done. It's a lot stronger than it was before. There is, of course, one company in England where you can buy a replacement for this cross member. Uh, I emailed them. They will not ship to the U.S. So... Well, I ain't getting it then. So I fixed what I had as best as I could. Uh, a frame for this isn't outrageously expensive, but I kind of wanted to do some welding and do some learning, which I'm regretting now, but that's fine too. This thing's gonna be a good vehicle when it's all put together, but she ain't gonna be pretty, but she'll, she'll do the job. The next part after this is starting to put the engine back in it. Well, the next part after this is fluid filming the underside after hitting it all with a wire wheel just to get the worst of the, uh, the crust off of it. And then it will be time to put the engine in, which has been sitting ominously in that crate from Surrey, uh, yes, from Surrey, England, for a little over a year, which <sighs> I wish it wasn't, but well, no, I'm glad that it's there because now I have a good engine to put back into it, so. Hi right, guys, we're back and uh, I've been working on this uh, for the last few days after work and as you can see, it may not be welded perfect, but it sure is welded. And uh, the reason why there were some issues with that originally and I ended up literally chucking my torch on the ground and walking out of my garage because I was so frustrated had to do with this TIG torch. Now this torch came with my TIG welder. Now normally you'll see them have a white line right about there. Uh, that's a gasket that holds the gas in. Now, you might think, you know, it's it's under pressure, it's, it's neutral gas, as it comes up the line, it'll just push out and, and it'll, you know, it, it'll be fine. But the problem is any crack in the hose or anywhere else or any leak where it can come out, it's gonna pull a little oxygen in via the Venturi effect. And once it puts oxygen out this end, you ain't gonna get a good weld. So, what it is, is you have the electrode holder, which looks like this. And you have a collet that looks like this. And when you tighten them up into each other, that's how it assembles inside the torque tread. Well, and I don't think you guys can see, but right around the edge of this, there's a gap, so there's an air source there. So I ordered, looked up part numbers for this torch. This is a Heliarc HW17. Um, found the right gaskets for the front and the rear on it, but in the meantime, I put an O-ring right up against that edge there, and that sealed it off, and now I can weld. Well, now the welder works as intended. Whether or not I can weld is a completely different issue. But that's what went on there. So now those are welded up. I'm, I'm pleased with how they welded, especially since this top material is a little bit thinner than this side material. So uh, it was a little bit tricky, but it's all welded. And there's even a, you know, an inch or two right there and maybe there where the weld looks pretty good. So uh, I'm happy. I'm gonna go off into the corner here though next and uh, patch that in. And I'm also gonna take a piece of uh, an old boat fuel tank because I know that's weldable and cut that out for right here. And I'm gonna even try to bend it and weld it down the side. So it just really fills in that spot nicely. So um, onwards and upwards. Well, I got this patch fitted in pretty well. Um, there's a little more of a gap on this side than I would like. Right there is about a well, quarter inch gap. But I, I can put blobs of weld on it all day long till it looks 
terrible, but that's okay. Um, now, you might look at this, and if you saw the before, you'd see that the damage was mostly here, and there were a few drill holes here and some other little bits. Um, the reason why I cut the whole way across is a simple one due to laziness. If I had cut like that, I'd have this whole long seam to weld. Instead, I need to weld a little there, a little there, and then up, and I still have one long seam, but I don't have two long seams. And then this was spot welded in place before, so I drilled, it's really hard to make them out on the camera, I think, but I drilled three holes so I can fill those up with weld and weld it back in place just like it was from the factory. And then I still have to cut a piece in and put it in here, but I just don't have the time to get it done uh, tonight or for this weekend. So, well, I, it'll be done before this weekend, but not not in filmable form so hopefully next time we get together this will be all welded in this will be all welded in and then we can work on putting the uh the this will be welded in and this will be welded in and all cleaned up and i'll, I'll cover it with zinc chromate primer because i have it from an outboard and it seems like the right thing for this i think it's zinc chromate it's it's for aluminum only and then up on top of here, which is really accessible as you can tell, um, there's a funky bracket that goes from here to here, and then another bracket from the back to there to, to mount to the frame so that your seat belts don't rip out of the aluminum the minute you hit a stop and uh, it makes it safe. Safe is not this vehicle, but that's okay. So that's pretty much it for this week, working on the old Defender right here. Uh, my fiance named it Honeybee because it's yellow and black and, and it buzzes like hell. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, we'll be working on this for on and off. Uh, there'll definitely be some weeks where I go back to more old style projects. I have some fabrication projects coming up and some little things, but if I don't work on this on film, I ain't going to work on it at all. And, uh, it's been off the road way too long and it's time to bring her back. So uh, I'm gonna bring you guys along with me and if you like it, great. And if you don't, uh, let me know, I can, I can work around it. But anyways, have a great day. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. That's really the big thing that I need on this channel. And uh, you know, keep it classy.